So, this World Wide Web, what do you use it for? You use it for pornography? Well, at least you're an honest pervert. I'll bet you think my face is expressionless, don't you? Yeah, bite me. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are quote unquote playing a weird Dreamcast game that I'm going to go on the record right now and say there's absolutely no way you should play this game before you die. The only reason it is in the book is because of how flipping weird it is. It's not even groundbreaking, I would say, and it's honestly not even interesting. <laughs> it's just weird. It's one of the weirdest video games ever. Um, and truthfully, uh, it looked like it was going to be near impossible for me to actually get a copy of this game, so I uh, am actually dubbing over somebody else's gameplay. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Um, I'm just going to use some snippets here. Uh, the gameplay footage that this comes from is about four hours long, and we're only going to be looking at this for about 10 or 15 minutes because there's not going to be that much to say. But this is Seaman. First of all, terrible name for a game. I mean, I know we're adults and we're not like giddy little eight-year-olds. Ooh, he said Seaman. But like, come on. Like, that's a terrible name for a game. As you'll see, this game is creepy as hell. It is the weirdest game ever. Um, and you also may be saying like, Jay, you're not really playing it by just dubbing over somebody else's gameplay. As you'll see, there's virtually no gameplay to be had. It is a weird, obscure, hard to get game. It's like impossible to even emulate it. So I couldn't even do it that way. But what makes it hard is you actually need a microphone to use this on the Dreamcast. And again, it, I wouldn't even classify this as a game. This is a weird thing that was created for the Dreamcast. Anyway, uh, Leonard Nimoy is actually narrating here, so I'm going to actually rewind a bit, and let's hear what uh, the... <laughs> Leonard Nimoy is in this game. Why? It is so weird that he is in this game. But anyway, we'll rewind and we'll hear what he actually has to say here. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. You'll witness before you a phenomenon like no other. A man of the sea. <coughs> sea man. This legendary creature will be dependent on you for its life's blood. You'll begin right here in Gasset's laboratory. Where is this laboratory? What awaits you within? You have no idea what Seaman is or how it evolves. This is something you must find out for yourself, as there is little documentation to help you on your way. My name is Leonard Nimoy, and I will be your guide. Well. This is your first day with the Seaman kit. Your first step will involve preparing the tank for Seaman's arrival. Adjust the tank settings to be an adequate temperature with sufficient oxygen. While adjusting, keep in mind that blue is the color of the sea, and thus an appropriate color for the care of Seaman. Then take the egg from the storage matrix and place it in the tank. Okay, this goes on and on for a bit. I won't subject you to all of it, but have you ever wanted the responsibility of owning a sea creature without actually owning one and for Leonard Nimoy to tell you what to do? Also, again, this is a creepy as hell little sea creature. It is literally a frog with a human's face and it talks to you. <laughs> And let me tell you, if I went into a scientist's lab and he had little sea creatures with his face and he called them seamen, I mean, the joke almost writes itself at that point. Uh, we're just going to let this play out a bit. Uh, in fact, let me fast forward here a bit. Okay, so you start off, you pick an egg, you throw it into the tank, you have to adjust the heater. This is a virtual pet game. So if you guys remember like Tamagotchis or whatever, if you had those when you were a kid, basically that. And literally, um, so I've actually seen the Angry Video Game Nerd play this. Uh, he had a really funny episode about this. So I knew about this game coming into it. But like literally, you would have to do a little bit of work and walk away and come back days later. N now, maybe that interests you. Maybe the idea of having a virtual pet and it actually existing in sort of real time is interesting. But, you know, this this is not a video game. This is 
like some sort of weird gaming experience. And that's fine. You know, these things can exist. People had Tamagotchis. They loved them. Most people's Tamagotchis just ended up dead. I mean, on a long enough timeline, every Tamagotchi ends up dead because nobody's still taking care of it after all these years. So it's like, you know, they're pets. They're virtual pets that are going to die eventually. I don't know. I mean, all pets really die. Okay, we're getting dark here. But it's sort of like, what is the point? I don't know. Like, this never interested me. Even if I had heard about this as a, as a kid when the Dreamcast was out, I would have said that's weird, and I I never would ask my parents to buy this for Christmas. Never, you know. You know, just, like, not interested. And, like, look, there's nothing even on the screen here. Okay, eventually you can turn the light on, and there you go. Here's the glorious fish tank. And you can look at your little egg and watch your seamen hatch out of it. You mess with the heater. And you wait. I mean, it's interesting in some in so much as it's a simulation, I suppose. You know? But, like, money went to produce this. They hired Leonard Nimoy for this. Why? What the hell, man? We're going to have to go read what the developers thought they were doing with this afterwards, because I'm really curious. Anyway, fast forwarding. Here's a fun thing you can do. You can tap on this snail shell. And it will eat some of the eggs that have hatched. I don't even know what the hell is happening. But he's tapping on this shell a long time, this guy here. Again, maybe this is what you do, or maybe this is the only th interesting thing you can do. Now we are just... Getting a wide shot of the tank. Nothing's really happening right now. The thrilling joys of Seaman. If you want, you can uh, start making finer adjustments to the heat levels of the water. Okay, and the snail has crawled out now, I guess. I mean, hopefully a Seaman will be born here soon. Like, imagine we were playing this. This, By the way, this is like 40 minutes into the game. There's, We wouldn't even have seen a Seaman if I actually got this game to play. It's, it's crazy. You know, if I could have emulated this, I probably would have played it. But there's absolutely no way I'm going on eBay and, like, purchasing a mic and an original copy of this game. I mean, I guess the other thing is, if this had been ported to, like, PS4, if you could get it. But I feel like this game was so bad and did so poorly that it's, like, the people who made it, they they didn't even get a chance. Like, it's not like it got, uh, you know, re-released on Steam or something. This game is just forgotten. It's so crappy. <laughs> now we get to watch this thing just writhe around. I don't know what's happening. Are the seamen, like, aliens? Are they going to burst out of it? Okay, I think the seamen have killed whatever that creature was. Oh, and here we go. Here are the seamen. This is not disturbing at all. Fish with the face of a human. <laughs> so that creature ate the seamen eggs, and then they... So these are basically like aliens, like straight out of the Sigourney Weaver movies. Oh, that's so weird. They talk to you when you click on them. Rap. Well. Clap, clap, clap. Oh my god, that's creepy. Alright, so then here's the fun thing. You have to go in and manually change the date <laughs> on your uh, Dreamcast so that when you come back in, it looks like time has passed. Again, the semen grow over time. You can't just sit down and play through this. No, no, no. It takes you like a month to play this game. And, I mean, I guess therein is the hook, you know? It's more of an experience than a game. But... You know, I don't know. A thousand one games you must play before you die. Okay, hold on. I, I, I can literally look up, up this game in the book while this is being played. This is the, the joy of being able to dub over somebody else's gameplay here. But, uh, alright. Seamen. Let me fast forward to something interesting for you guys to watch while I look this up. Oh, look. The seamen have grown a little. They're still talking in gibberish, though. You can tickle their faces. It's creepy. Okay, more stuff's happening. I guess I guess they're 
They're bigger. They're not just a fish. Very creepy. Like, look at that thing. That thing is inhuman. I think I'm just disturbed by this game more than anything. I don't know what's happening. The game's glitching out. So eventually the seamen do get bigger. And look, he's developing legs and stuff, too. That's very creepy. Oh, yeah, that's not creepy at all. That thing's gonna crawl out of the tank at night and murder us all. Okay, I think he's gonna okay, say something. let's try this again, shall we? Here's my next question. If a man yells for seven days straight, and his pitch raises an octave every three hours, what does he have at the end of the week? What are you, the Riddler? Correct. Very good. Okay, let's go. What the hell was that? When I ask you something, I expect an answer. Okay, before I had a question for you. It was... <clears throat> so, this World Wide Web. What do you use it for? What? You use it for pornography? What? <laughs> well, at least you're an honest pervert. What? <laughs> what is this game? Jesus. Do you ever use email? He's like really interested in my web habits. So you email people? Do you prefer to keep in touch with people through email or the telephone? Yes, there's nothing as comforting as the sound of a human voice. I must say, even I've gotten used to it over time. Okay, that is just creepy. Um, okay, here's what the 1001 book says. As Microsoft seeks to usher in a new era of interaction with speech recognition capabilities of its Xbox and Natal, it's easy to forget Sega pioneered the technology, uh, beginning with a fairly grotesque fish with a man's face, yes, <laughs> which tried to converse with you. In terms of s its system, Seaman works like a Tamagotchi. Um... It's measured in days, not weeks. To begin, you merely interact with the temperature. Seaman begins to create syllables and speech, and every stage progresses a little differently. As the experience progresses, you raise insects, which you feed to your seaman. But the Tamagotchi element of the game always plays second fiddle to the conversation. So this is about having conversations with the seaman. Best played in short bursts to avoid repetition. The seaman ably demonstrates the wonders and limitations of nurturing virtual conversation list. For that, it is to be celebrated, if not mimicked. Disagree! I know I have not played it and only looked at snippets, but... Hello. No way, man. This game sucks. <laughs> this game sucks. I don't care if you can have conversations with it. Why would I want to? This is the most terribly ill-thought-out, poorly designed thing ever. And I know that they were trying to do something new. I get it. And actually, as far as innovation goes, sure. But did it have to be so disgusting? <laughs> like a weird sea creature that's talking to you about your email preferences, calling you a pervert? It just doesn't make any sense. Hey, you. <laughs> what do you want, Seaman? Now, here's something that you might be interested in as an internet user. Do you think the internet should be censored? So you don't think the internet should be censored, is that right? Well, that's not surprising, considering you're such a big fan of downloadable nudie pictures. What? I guess one can always count on the pervert vote in the free internet debate. What? You... <laughs> I'm not a pervert! I mean, okay, if you think about what this game is doing, it's essentially no different than just a dialogue tree, right? So the idea is you're supposed to be talking to your seaman, but like 
We've seen dialogue trees in the oldest, like, Zork video games. You know, all you need is a bunch of uh, text responses and a decision a decision tree really and like it's it's internet. interesting but i suppose that they had it done all with recorded video but it's not like very groundbreaking as if this thing is actually talking to you it just has a series of questions it asks you and based on sort of yes or no answers it goes through different pre-recorded responses so like you know maybe it gives the illusion of intelligence and that's kind of interesting but like i don't think even back in the day i would have been impressed by this like i don't know just i don't know guys i don't know see man i don't know it's in the book a thousand video games you must play before you die what do you guys think of this weird bizarre experiment how did leonard nimoy of all people get involved in this who knows? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. But I, for one, am happy that I didn't actually spend any money to actually get this game because literally all you would do is stand here looking at the Seaman and he would talk at you. I guess we didn't get to talk back, so our answers didn't get to be uh, registered by Seaman. But frankly, I'm uh, not convinced that the voice recognition would have even done a very good job, so I don't know. There you go, C-Man. Whatever, I'm counting it as played. It's checked off the list. We'll move on to another game next time, guys. I hope, if anything, you found this game weird and entertaining. Give me your own rant about C-Man in the comments down below. Attacking or defending it. If you are a C-Man apologist, I want to hear from you. Tell me all the reasons I'm stupid for thinking it's stupid. Go ahead. You won't hurt my feelings. Um, well, uh, yeah, no, you probably won't. Anyway, that's it for me. I will catch you in the next one, guys. Until then, <laughs> Gaming J and C-Man out. Peace! It's up to all of you humans to decide how to use the internet intelligently so that it won't harm you. Well, I could go on and on and on, so I'd better stop right now. It's been a pleasure.